Hi, I'm Graham Steele, CEO and founder of CryptoSense. And today I'm going to talk about the Mimecast certificate compromise. So you might have heard recently about the SolarWinds attack and you might have seen our video here on the channel. We talked about how this IT management software vendor was compromised by a sophisticated threat actor who managed amongst other things to put some malicious code into an update to the SolarWinds product that was then downloaded and authenticated as being a real update by the victims of the attack who then installed this backdoor on their servers. So now it's a few weeks later and we've just heard in a notification on the Mimecast blog about a compromise there. So who are Mimecast? Mimecast is a uh, quite a big cybersecurity vendor uh, that's been around since 2003, mostly sells email security solutions. And one of their products uh, can be adapted to work with Microsoft hosted email. So email that's hosted on the Microsoft 365 Exchange uh, platform. So this is where you buy an Exchange server essentially, but in the cloud and then and you put your email there. And so Mimecast sell a series of solutions for that environment, including some backup solutions and some monitoring solutions that will look at the content of mail. And these services have a need to get access to read the mail so that they can, they can work. And so we're not going to give them access via usernames and passwords. They're going to have a permanent access through a, a cryptographic certificate that will allow those services to attach to the email server and do what they need to do. So the problem here is that it seems that a sophisticated bunch of attackers have managed to compromise one of these certificates, which means that they could uh, get access to the mail. What exact access they can get is something that uh, Mimecast are keeping fairly quiet about. So it may be that this certificate compromise would allow a malicious actor to actually go ahead and read mail. There might be other layers of protection involved. It may be that this certificate allows settings to be changed on the mail server so that the protections can be turned off. We don't exactly know for the moment. But what is clear is a pattern here. The attackers knew that it was much more easy to get access to this mail by subverting a certificate used for this kind of third-party security service in the same way that they knew that compromising their victims through the SolarWinds attack it was much easier to do this by getting something, compromising the email, the signing chain of the code that was used to deliver a, an update. So again, they've realized that going through a cryptographically signed connection, whether it's through a certificate that's connecting to the mail server or through a signed update that's going to be uh, downloaded and accepted, is so subverting that cryptographic security check is a great way to get access uh, deep inside a victim system. So was this the same attack group? Well, there's a lot of speculation about that and the timing and the nature of it uh, suggests that maybe it is, but we don't have any confirmation about that uh, for the moment. What is very clear is with the greater automation that's generally being used to manage security, it's getting a lot more interesting rather than to try to compromise individual credentials, so to try and get the username and password of somebody to, to log in and read some sensitive data. It's much more interesting to try and compromise machine credentials. So compromise the machine identity rather than the person's identity that's used to either sign a code update or get access uh, to a mail server to all of the mail, not just the mail of an individual uh, person in order to try and, and make an attack. So that's why it's more important than ever to maintain a automated and complete inventory of the cryptographic credentials that form the machine's identities of your infrastructure. So whether that's certificates, ones that you've issued, ones that other people have issued, ones that you've got, SSH keys, API keys, all the cryptography that you use that is giving you that identity that allows this kind of uh, deep access. You need to keep an up-to-date inventory of where it is, how it's protected, who has access to that, who's responsible for it, and so on. So if you're interested in going further on that, we have a bunch of videos about creating and maintaining cryptographic inventory here on the site. If not, go ahead and subscribe to keep up to date with more news on this subject. And if you have any questions, please go ahead and put them in the comments. Hope to see you again here soon on the channel.